Vertex Normal Word Space. In this video, I'm gonna explain what it is, what it's used for, and how we can use it in our materials. By the end of this video, you'll be able to create these materials and most importantly, understand how they work. So let's do it. Right click in the material graph and search for Vertex Normal WS. Two results will pop up, but they're the same. It only has one output and no settings here in the details tab. This section here adds a description to the node. All the nodes have it. We can also right click on the node and add the description here. So what does it do? It outputs vector data stored at each vertex that is most commonly used by a renderer to determine the reflection of lighting and shading models. So let's connect it to the base color input to see what that means. We'll get this colorful result. Let's set the view mode to unleash to better see the colors. It's easier to understand if I use a mask node and check its individual channels one by one. So add a component mask, connect them like this and only enable the R channel. The R channel represents the X axis. So we'll get the black to white gradient along the X axis. The G channel represents the Y axis. So we'll get the gradient in this direction. And the B channel represents the Z axis. So we'll get the gradient in the up and down direction. But what are these values? Why is it black in the middle all the way to the bottom? And why is there a black to white gradient in the upper half? This node outputs the vertex normal in the form of a vector. These are the normals. In the z-axis, the normal on the top is 1, the normal on the bottom is minus 1, and the normal in the middle is 0. Here we have all the values between 0 and 1, and here we have all the values between 0 and minus 1. 0 and any value below that is black. That's why this part is black. 1 and any value above that is white. That's why it's white on the top. And every decimal between 0 and 1 outputs different shades of gray. Hence the gradient. Watch the basic math video to better understand why we get these colors. We can use the same analogy to explain why we get these results along the x and y axis. These three channels are then put on top of each other and create this colorful output. For example, in this section, all the values are zero or lower than zero. That's why it's black. If I change the preview mesh to cube, we'll be able to better see the result. All these triangles facing the positive direction have a color. X is red, Y is green, Z is blue. And all these triangles facing the negative directions are black. So now that we know what it outputs, let's go over some things to consider when using it. But before getting to that, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Also join our community on Telegram, Discord and Facebook. And check out my Patreon if you're interested in supporting the channel. We can use this as a mask to determine the direction in which we want to displace something. But keep in mind that offsetting position along the normal will cause the geometry to split apart along UV seams. We can also use it to mask certain areas of a mesh, mostly the top part. When we rotate the mesh, the top and bottom materials will stay where they are. If for some reason you want the normal of the object to be calculated in its local space, it's possible. Add the transform vector node after it. Set the source to world space. And set the destination to local space. Connect it like this. And it's done. Now no matter how you rotate the object, the mask won't change. You can also add the component mask after the transform vector node to mask any channel you want. Let's use it to procedurally put a second material on top of objects. Create a new material, name it and open it. I'll add the grass and the rock textures from the starter content.
connect them to a LERP node like this and I will use the B channel of the vertex normal node run it through a saturate and connect it to the alpha input using a named reroute node I'll do the same for the normal maps then I will connect them to the base color and the normal inputs like this let's assign it to the sphere the cube and the cylinder and now no matter how I rotate them grass is always on the top next I'll add a multiply an add node and two parameters name them transition offset and transition falloff set the transition falloff to 1 and connect them like this Now we can move the transition up and down and make it smoother or sharper. Let's build on top of the same material. I'll multiply the vertex normal output by a new parameter name it WPO strength connect it to the Z input of a make float 3 this is so we only affect it in the Z axis then connect it to the world position offset input and now we can do this if you don't want the add and multiply to affect the world position offset result you can add a vertex normal world space mask its B channel and use it instead and if you want to only have the effect in the positive direction use the saturate node after the mask Pixel normal word space node can be used alongside this node to create some great looking masks. So click here to learn more about it and thank you so much for watching. Like this video, subscribe and join our communities on Telegram, Discord and Facebook. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. So see you in the next one.